Welcome everyone to our prayer journey with Mike Toad Daily Devotion. I hope this day catches you in a spirit of hope. But if not, if you find yourself beaten down with all of the world news, sometimes I just got to shut that news off. But when you know about the stock market going down, you know, a good percentage, and then you hear of and experience high gas prices. I was just driving part of the country where I had to go 10 or 15 hours of driving over two days. And what do I see? I see diesel uh, gas shortages in certain gas stations. The big ones still had it, but the little gas stations did not have the diesel fuel anymore, which we know will affect what winds up in a store in the future. We hear of rumors of war coming in all different directions where we may or may not get involved in Taiwan or in, uh, you know, in Ukraine. The news breaks and we hear all these different things, it's discouraging, disheartening. And then, you know, we know that uh, the government unrest between different sides is really uh, not very brotherly, let me put it that way. It's a very difficult situation when people do not want to discuss and talk and make amends, but want to hate one another. We as Christians should not be doing those things. What should we be doing as Christians? Well, we should be counting our blessings. You know, my father, he came from the time of the Great Depression, where they didn't even have in his cities any running toilets. They had to go out to an outhouse. Could you imagine today having to go out to an outhouse? That could happen if the power shortages they're talking about start to take place. Little things like that are difficult. Can you imagine a city being out for a week or two without power in a big building? Where do you go to the bathroom? You know, and during the, the Great Depression, my father, a man came to his house, or a boy, he was a young man at the time, and he asked, do you have something to eat? And my father gave him a mustard sandwich, just mustard on bread. And when his father got home, his father was livid because they had eight kids, and they, that was the what they had to eat for that day, just a couple of mustard sandwiches. So they had to get by with that. They went to bed hungry. Count your blessings. We do not do that in this country to this point. And if we go to bed hungry here because we're poor, it's not real hunger. I remember going to bed as a young boy hungry, but I ate a pork chop. I just didn't have enough food, but I ate something decent. In other countries, a lot of people have nothing. And here's one of the reasons. In Deuteronomy chapter 7 and verse 10, it says, and I repay it them that hate me to their face, to destroy them. He will not be slack to him that hated him. He will repay him to his face. God knows who are his and who are not his. And not only that, it's those that hate God. If someone doesn't know God, God is not unjust against them. But if they hate God, they don't want to believe in God. And we see that in our nation everywhere. But here's the promise to the Christian, to the believer here in Deuteronomy. He's talking to the Jewish believer. Listen to what he says. But because the Lord loved you and because he would keep his oath, which he had sworn unto you, your fathers, had the Lord brought you out of the mighty hand and redeemed you out of the house of the bondmen and the hand of Pharaoh and king of Egypt. Know therefore that the Lord thy God, he is God, the faithful God, which keepeth his covenant and mercy with them that love him and keep his commandments. And he will keep you for a thousand generations. He will bless you for a thousand generations. Talking about even eternal life. We did not escape from Egypt. But we escaped, if we're a Christian, from the bondage of sin that we should no longer be living in. If we have escaped that, God's hand of promise is upon us. And we know that we are secure. And he is not judging us 
by judging those around us until he corrects the problem. So until next time, may Jesus increase as we decrease.